welcome back. Now, our next guest made his breakthrough in a show that was, at various times, a teen vampire drama, a period epic, a silent movie, and even a musical. James Marsters could do my left foot, but Daniel Day-Lewis could never do Buffy the Vampire Slayer. James joins us now to talk about playing one of TV's first vampire heartthrobs. But first, here's a clip of him in action. Hello, Magic Box. Slayer. Spike? Meet me at the cemetery. 20 minutes. Come alone. Spike? Bloody hell. Yes, it's me. You're calling me on the phone? Just be there. Why? Are you helping again? You have a lead on this frost monster thingy? Something like that, yeah. Thought you might be up for a little grunt work. What? No, no, no grunting. I was talking shop, love, but if you got other ideas, you, me, cozy little tomb with a view. James, good morning. Thank you for being with us here on Ireland AM. Good morning, Paul. Good to be with you. So I think even from the first moment there of listening to your accent, because the, the dulcet tones coming through there are like are absolutely beautiful. But viewers will be surprised to know that there's not a London twang there. That that was actually an accent that you had to that you put on for the for the character of Spike. Yes, uh, I have a I have a fabulous California accent naturally, <laughs> and the uh, the London one I had to learn slowly. It got better. It wasn't actually very good, I don't think, in the very beginning, in season two. Uh, and Tony Head tutored me by force. Uh, I embarrassed him. Uh, I mispronounced bullocks. Oh, can we say that in the AM on, in Ireland? We'll pretend. Um, we'll, we'll pretend. We'll, we'll pretend all... like it was the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I we're mispronounced all... that, that <laughs> word. <laughs> Could you could you feel could you feel the pressure because you you said there Anthony Head was the pressure on because obviously he has like the proper the draw of the English the English twang did you feel the pressure there with being in with him? Oh yes, because he came up to me and he said, you know, we don't say it like that, you prat. You're embarrassing me back home. I'm going to help you now. <laughs> and he he would not even knock. He would come into my trailer when the new script came out and we'd go over all of my lines until he was. Uh, until he was satisfied. <laughs> oh, dear, uh, it was very kind, but very forceful. That is some serious bit of vocal coaching there. We have to talk about Spike and him arriving into Buffy because by its nature, a vampire, well, they should be ugly. So, well, let's face it, Spike definitely wasn't that because he was part of all of our, our growing up. Had a weird affiliation and liking uh, vampires. He was supposed to be evil and then he was supposed to be gone. So when you booked originally for Buffy, did you think like, I'll get one episode, two episodes? What did the contract look like? And did you think Spike had, which is weird to say for a vampire, such a long life? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, they said that I was, uh, I was going to last for five to ten episodes. Uh, the point of the season was this, that uh, Angel and uh, Buffy uh, get together, so to speak, uh, uh, in the biblical sense. And then Angel goes evil and uh, kills me and takes up with Drusilla so that, uh, that Buffy can get her heart broken. Um, and so I was, I was told that I was definitely going to die. Uh, and if I, did, if I did well, it would be closer to 10. And if I didn't do so well, it would be closer to 5. So initially, I was just trying to last a, a few extra episodes. And the pressure of something like that, you know, especially living the LA life and trying to keep that, keep that moving. Was it hard when they throw the curveballs at you with things like period dramas, musical episodes, silent episodes? Because Buffy was kind of the first of its kind because, you know, there was such a mad hype when they used to do something that was so off the wall, so out of the box. Did you know what was going to be thrown at you next? Never. No. Uh, but I, I, it was just a wonderful smorgasbord for me. Uh, I had done theater uh, and had done comedy and drama and modern and, and, you know, Shakespeare, Moliere and farce and all different styles. And uh, I thought that I was coming down to Los Angeles to, to do a television show, which was going to be boring, but was going to pay well. And I found myself on a show that was like, kind of like doing repertory theater. Like you never knew which style you're going to be playing week to week, or even you know scene to scene within an episode. It was just marvelous. I suppose it was yeah. it was it was kind of like your training. You trained at Juilliard, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of like the training every day. You're kind of going to be playing a different character in a different role every 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 style of Buffy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or take the same, you know, take the same uh, character and then play it as if he's in a checkoff play and then uh, do it as if, if he, as if he's in an O'Neill play and, and, you know, uh, everything in between. Um, yeah. And really, I mean, when the writing is that good, you really just let it carry you. Honestly, uh, it's much more work to try to make mediocre writing uh, be something worthwhile, you know, or, or, or worth watching. Uh, it's just much easier just to let the writing make you look good. Mm. Speaking of which, James, in terms of Buffy, obviously it was iconic, but I'm interested to see from the time of you starting to film it going to air and how quickly you were recognisable because it's iconic and Spike became iconic quite quickly. How did that translate to your day-to-day? Because -day? obviously with Sarah Michelle Gellar, everywhere she went, and then you quickly fell into that from our view, but from your view, what did it look like? Um, yeah, I was I was kind of a neon bulb because I had the the, the white hair. And so anyone walking on the street looking at me, you kind of ask yourself, you know, who's the freak, you know? <laughs> and and if you stare long enough, you answer the question, oh, he's the freak I saw on television. And so uh, very quickly, it became uh, hard to kind of walk around. Um, pretty quickly, uh, I used to count for 10 seconds. Uh, I could only stop on the sidewalk for 10 seconds before a crowd formed. Wow. Uh, so, and it was... I just didn't go outside a lot, I'll be honest. Was, <laughs> well, you probably uh, couldn't because you, should, you, you were supposed to be this pale character and you were living in L.A. and you were supposed to be like this pale character of a spike. So, you know, it worked, it worked well. Listen, talk, yeah. to, talk to me about the, the reunion that, that happened quite recently. What was that like to kind of get back together after such a, such a mad period of time and to see each other and to, you know, be in each other's company? It was refreshing because we were all well-rested. We'd never hung out together when we'd had any sleep. Uh, we we shot Buffy. We we worked about 18 to 20 hours a day. Uh, and so we were just massively tired uh, and fairly stressed out, you know, trying to live up to these great scripts and make what was really good television. The pressure was enormous. And just to be able to hang out with people when the pressure was really low uh, and everyone had, you know, many full nights sleep. Uh, it was kind of like day camp. I remember, most of all, I just remember talking to Seth Green. Uh, uh, he's a great person and we didn't, we didn't intersect that much on the show. Uh, and so we didn't really have a lot of time on the set to get to know each other. So I, a, lot of the, a lot of that day for me was just hanging out with Seth. And we have to talk, we can't have you here without talking about something very close to our heart here in Ireland. Uh, of course, P.S. I Love You and, and your role in that. What was it like? We talked about accents. Did, 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 you, did the Jared Butler Irish accent, was, it, was there not a moment to kind of go, here, look, listen, listen to me, do, do, this, do this a bit better? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you know, I, I learned something, uh, or I think I did, uh, which is that the... The big stars, uh, and that was the only project I've worked on with like multiple Academy Award winning actors. Uh, they're so nice. They're so humble. They're so hardworking. They're so grateful. Uh, I remember talking to Kathy Bates about this. Uh, and she said, you know, when, when you're in the, on the A-list, you're working with A-list producers and they can work, work with anyone. So the, the, the way that you get on the A-list is you're easy to work with and you're a nice person. And I remember Jerry... Uh, Gerard Butler, uh, we played best friends on the movie and, and uh, we only had one scene together and he sat down at the bar that we were shooting at uh, and it, he introduced himself and he said, all right, we've got um, 20 minutes to become best friends. And he looked at his watch and he spent 10 minutes telling me every horrible thing that he ever did in his life, like really, really bad things and embarrassing things and only th things that only a really good friend would know. And after 10 minutes, he glanced at his watch and he said, okay, your turn. Oh. And so I had to tell him all of my dirty laundry. And sure enough, after 20 minutes, we knew each other really well. That's the way uh, to make a BFF, James. Before you go, I have to ask yeah. you about Cameo because I heard your name come up a couple of weeks ago when they were talking about the top stars of Cameo. You are yeah. hot Cameo property. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> I say that as a, as a mother in your, my generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, I found uh, people wanted to give, like, have Spike sing them happy birthday. And at first I was like, well, I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really Spike. Is that honest to do? And then I finally realized, you know, this is an opportunity to just go back and play Spike. I can, I guess I can just get to play Spike for two to three minutes at a time for, for individuals. It's, it's a hoot. It's wonderful. And I have a lot of fun. And really quickly before I let you go, if there was a revival happening, would you be, would you do it? Well, there was a, there was a revival being talked about. Um, the thing is that I, I think it was very smart. It was going to be a new Slayer for a new generation. Uh, not a new Buffy and a new Spike. Okay. Uh, and I thought that was a really good idea. The pandemic, I think, sidelined it. Uh, so they're having to get that back together. But we might get um, it. We might get it very soon. Yeah, I hope so. Fingers crossed. Uh, I, would, I, I would think that, like, I would like Spike to be the new Watcher and just have him be horrible to her. Uh, just uncompromising and rude. And flip um, the script completely. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant, yeah, but... brilliant, brilliant. James, thank you so much for joining us on Ireland AM this morning. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's really fun, man. Thank Good you. Morning. For more from James, you can reach out to him via the app Cameo and he'll record you a personalised message as Spike. Lots more to come on Ireland AM. We'll see you after this short break.